Tonight, brethren, as we come to remember the Lord's death, gather around this table of remembrance, I want to think about um, a sacrifice back in Genesis 22. Remember Abraham, he was sent by God to, he said, take the son, the, the one that you love, an offering for a burnt offering. And they got to the mountain and it says Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. He was going to bear the burden. Isaac was going to bear the burden up the mountain. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they, weren't both, they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the, where is the lamb? Kind of unusual. It must have been, must have been um, aware of a proper way to do a sacrifice. Want to know where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. It must have sufficed him because it says, so they went both of them together up the mountain. Now, Abraham knew what he was going to do, but Isaac... He didn't know. In verse 9 it says, And he came to the place which God had told him of, and Abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And at that point in time, in Abraham's heart, he was good as dead. He, was, he, was, he wasn't hesitating. He didn't raise the knife and then wait. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. Oh, what was some sweet words, wasn't it? He was interrupted. And the point I really want to make tonight is that there came a time when there was another sacrifice that wouldn't be interrupted. Wouldn't be interrupted. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seest thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering. Not many days later, that is in respect to eternity, just a few, just a few moments later, another father would lead his son, his only begotten son, that one that he loved, up another mountain. This father is God, and his son, it, it was said, it was, it's a lamb of God that was to take away the sin of the world. I want to present to you one last question here tonight. This has been a marvelous time of considering the questions of God. And in Matthew 27, 46, it was about the ninth hour. Jesus was on the cross. He, was, he had bore, he was bearing the sins of the world. It just, it, our, we can't even comprehend what that all entails. How could one man bear the sin of the whole world and yet here he is bearing the sin of the whole world? And he asked a question. Now, he didn't ask it for himself. We know this. Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew all things that would come upon him. It wasn't anything, any surprises for Jesus. He knew. And yet, see, mankind needed to hear this question. He said... My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We need, to, we need to hear that question. Man needs to know that there was a cost, a price, that was attached to the removal of their sins. Now this was the same man that the Almighty God had previously spoken of out of heaven. He boomed out of heaven and he said, this is my beloved son, but now, as he hung suspended between heaven and earth, God laid upon him the iniquity of us all, and he bore it away. And he asked, why? God wants us to know why. There's a reason why Jesus was forsaken. 
If Jesus is not forsaken, then our sins are still there, aren't they? But he was. He was forsaken. When this man was baptized, this one that hung on the tree, things happened that had never happened when anybody else was baptized. Remember, the heavens were opened unto him, to John. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and a voice that set from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, whom I'm well pleased. If you ever wonder how much God hates sin, just look at the cross. Right. Think of this question that Jesus asked, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was for our sin. But see, that's got to sink down into our ears. As we, we come to this table often, because we need to remember often, this is not, to, no man lives unto himself and no man dies unto himself. We've come to a, to a good table. This is a good table of remembrance. He took away our sin. We didn't deserve it, but Christ, Christ did it. He, in obedience to, to the Father, he submitted. It was for this reason that he came to the earth. See, when, when we have this question, those who are in Christ can answer this question. I can answer this question. I know why he did. So, he, so that we could be accepted in the beloved. Yeah. See, well, we know why, because this is what God was doing. His eternal purpose was at work here. Mm -hmm. But see, when people question this kind of thing, say, well, Jesus wasn't really forsaken. Well, then our sins really aren't taken away. But he really was. Jesus wasn't just mimicking some words. This was real to Jesus. He really was bearing the sins. He felt God forsake him. He was that ram that was caught in the thicket of the purpose of God. See, he received the commandment from God to come, to lay down his life, and... Take it again. But see, at the death of the cross, we don't want to leave people at the, at the cross. There's just more to the story. We got more. He's going to be he raised from the dead. See, this, this, this table depicts the whole thing, the whole picture. He came and he took away sin by the sacrifice of himself, and, and yet he ever lives to make intercession. He ever lives. He's, God raised him from the dead, didn't he? And see, now see, if you're in Christ... If you died, see, if, if, you're, if you've been dead with Christ, well, then you've been raised to walk in a new life. And this remembrance takes on a whole, new, a whole new way of remembering Christ. He ever lives. Once in the end of the world, he did appear. And he did put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. But he's returning. He's coming back. Yeah. Oh, what a celebration day that's going to be. Amen. The one that was cursed see, isn't cursed anymore. He come up out of that grave. He wasn't cursed then. So Christ was off once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him. See, we're come to this table looking, anticipating He's coming back, and when He does, He'll appear the second time without sin. Why? Because He took it away. It's gone. God's given us the answer, but the answer could only come through the death of his beloved son. He was willing to do it. He was willing to lay down his life because of, of what was up ahead. See, his death meant more than any death that had ever been. It accomplished more than any other death that had ever been. So see, when he, when he returns in power and great glory, see, all those that, that, that have remembered him, they'll say, this is our God. This is... We've, we've been living for this one. And now we gather together. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Let's remember his death again till he come. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this, this table you've given us, this opportunity to come and to remember this great cost it was to put away sin. But Father, we thank you, Lord, that you gave Christ a, to be a ransom. Father, that Lord, he's... He's our covering. Father, we ask, Lord, that tonight as we consider your son, that, Father, you would give us, Father, to be able to have good recollections of, of, of our Savior, the one that you sent. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, 
that he was the perfect sacrifice, the spotless lamb, the only one, Father, that could stand in the gap and take away sin. And we thank you for it in your son's name. Amen.